This video is about logistic regression. Imagine you are given a liquid along with certain properties of the liquid, like its color, its density, and some other chemical properties. Based on these properties you want to answer an important question. Is this liquid beer, or not? Since you already know a few things about function approximation, you know that you can model the properties as features and stack them into a feature vector. From linear regression, you know that you can find a weight vector w that combines these features into an estimated output y hat. However, you note that this output will give you some number while the question you asked is much simpler. You just want to know whether the given liquid is beer or not. That is, the output should be binary. How can you resolve this mismatch? Pause the video and think for yourself whether you can come up with a solution. A solution is the indicator function, which assigns a value of 1 if the output is positive and a value of 0 otherwise. However, this changes the model, and we, therefore, do not have a closed form solution to calculate the weights w. Also, the gradient of the indicator function is not informative. In this video, we will therefore discuss a statistically inspired approach to train our weight vector w. The key idea is simple. We take the output of the linear function and squash it through a function psi into the range 0, 1. We treat this squashed output as a probability. The more a sample x is in the direction of vector w, the higher the probability that sample x is a beer. A function that can achieve this is the logistic or sigmoid function given by this expression. This function psi approaches 1 if the input tends towards infinity, and 0 if the input tends towards negative infinity. The output can therefore be seen as a probability of whether a given liquid sample is beer. While other squashing functions are possible, we will stick to this function for the rest of the video, as it is the most commonly used. Given our output, we can classify a sample as beer if the probability given by psi is larger than 0.5. Note that this gives the same decision boundary as the indicator function before, as everything with a positive regression value will be classified as beer. However, the smooth logistic function and the probabilistic interpretation give us a way to train our weight vector w. Let's discuss this training next. To start, let us write down the likelihood of observing the outputs y, given the inputs x, and weights w. If the data samples are independent of each other, this is simply the product of the probabilities for each sample. Given the probabilistic interpretation of our model and splitting the positive and negative cases, we can write this also like this. Given that something to the power of 0 always equals 1 we can also write this more compactly like this. To further simplify it, let us denote our model by f hat. This gives us a compact formula for the likelihood of the data under our formulation for a given set of weights w. Note that if we maximize this quantity, we maximize the likelihood of a correct prediction of the outputs based on a corresponding input. Since maximizing a product is cumbersome in practice, let us take the logarithm on both sides to turn the product into a sum. Note that this logarithm does not change the optimal value. Also multiplying by a positive constant does not change the optimum, so let's divide by the dataset size n to get the average over the dataset instead of the sum. Finally, let's multiply by minus 1 to change the maximization into a minimization. That is, the arge max of the likelihood function is equivalent to the arge minute of the negative average log likelihood. We can then use this derived formula as a loss function in our optimization. This is referred to as logistic regression loss, or log loss in short. Let us examine this loss function a bit further, to see whether it behaves as expected. If our dataset consists of a single example which happens to be a beer, the second part becomes zero and our loss reduces to this part. If our model predicts with certainty that it is a beer, the loss is zero. If on the other hand, our classifier predicts with perfect confidence that this is not a beer, it will incur an infinite cost. Similarly, if we are given a liquid that is not beer, we can make analogous deductions. That is, if our model predicts correctly that it is not beer, it will suffer no loss, and if it predicts with confidence that it is beer, it will incur a high loss. So far so good. The question now is, how to find the optimal weights based on this loss? Pause the video and think for yourself whether you know the answer. Unfortunately, there is in general no closed form solution for logistic regression. However, we can differentiate the loss with respect to the weights and use gradient descent. 
gradient descent can thereby iteratively improve our estimate until a local optimum is reached. We note that for the sigmoid squashing function that we use here, the gradient with respect to the weights turns out to have a relatively simple structure, given by this formula. Let us go back to our picture and see whether we can improve our classifier in some way. Classifying liquids into beer and not beer is good, but what if we want to do more? For example, what if we want to classify the liquid into beer, wine, or tea? Pause the video and think about how we could achieve this. One simple solution is to take a binary classifier per class. Note that we independently train a different set of weights for each classifier. To know which of the classes a liquid belongs to we can then simply take the class that has the largest predicted likelihood. What do we get from such an approach? If the models are trained well, we should get low probabilities for a liquid that belongs to none of the classes. This allows us to identify these liquids as belonging to some other class. However, for some liquids, multiple of our binary classifiers might assign a high likelihood, claiming it belongs to their corresponding class. While we can simply assign the class which gave the highest likelihood to the new liquid, this might not be the best choice, since the classifiers got trained independently. Instead, we sometimes seek a setup in which we want to classify exclusively into the given classes. That is to say, for any given liquid we want our likelihood estimates to sum up to 1. Formally, we want our estimator to output a vector of k numbers, each of which lies between 0 and 1, with an additional constraint that the sum of them is equal to 1. We can achieve this by taking the linear outputs of our approximations and using a single function to squash them into a probability distribution. We can define such a function in that each element i is given by the exponent of the corresponding input, divided by the sum of all exponents. This is called the softmax function. Note that here too, a different set of linear weights w is learned for each class. However, since the probabilities sum up to 1, one set of weights is redundant. For two classes softmax regression reduces exactly to binary logistic regression that we studied at the beginning of this video. To get an intuition for the softmax function, let us visualize the effect for the case where we are given k equals 8 classes. The output of the linear regressions can take any value, positive or negative. Taking the exponent, we ensure that all values are positive. Note also that the exponent amplifies the differences between nearby values. Then, if we divide by the sum of all exponentiated values, we ensure that the final values sum up to 1. Taking the maximum can be seen as assigning all probability mass to a single value. The softmax function can therefore be seen as a smooth version of the max function, as it distributes this probability mass to all inputs according to how close they are to the maximum. Similar to logistic regression, we can derive a loss function for the softmax. Note that for k equals 2 this loss is identical to the loss for logistic regression discussed earlier, only the notation has been changed to use the indicator function. Differentiating this loss and using gradient descent, we can train our classifier to distinguish a liquid. Note however that the methods discussed here are generally applicable, so we can train all different types of classifiers. For example, classifying images into cats, dogs and chickens. Let us summarize the main insights of this video. If we want our function approximator to make a binary decision, we can do so by squashing our output into the range 0 1. Similarly, if we wish to classify into multiple classes, we can use a softmax function to get a distribution over the options. This gives us a probabilistic interpretation, from which we can derive the negative log likelihood loss. The derived loss function can then be used in gradient descent to update our model weights. Thanks for watching this video.